Hello, everybody. Welcome to Human Colony Hukalo TV Saturday webinar. Today is March 5th, 2016, and today we are going to have some really, really, really good information coming from Spirit. Uh, Valerie, can you introduce everybody, please? I sure will. Thank you, Dan. Today we have John Lee, Acrylic, uh, um, Kim, Nivy, Sheer, Shron, Will, and myself. And we have Jim channeling for us today. And who do you think you want to channel today, Jim, or who's going to come through for us? Um, I'm, I know that Takur is definitely going to come through, but I'm going to let you know who's here in my place. Uh, we have Angie here, Raymond, Sandy, John, Barbara, Helga, Mark, and myself. So, and Got today definitely, um, Takur is going to come to give an update on the meetings that happened this this week, but between the uh, the twenty second and the twenty fourth of February. So. It was a very long meeting, I guess. It, they said it was um, one of their longest meetings yet. So, but um, is there any other requests for people to come in? Oh, I believe that we've kind of talked about this a little before, but Blibu sounds interesting. Somebody we yeah. haven't seen before. Blibu, Blibu, yes, the, yeah. from the canine world, politician. Yes. Yeah. Very good. Oh, well, let's see what who does. We'll give I, would like to, I would like to second the uh, request for Archangel Gabriel. Okay, very good. Wonderful. Excellent. Alrighty then. Um, love you all, and um, we'll start with a very. I'm going to start with a meditation and a blessing. I just want to thank everyone for being here and. Just ask God to be here and present with us today and that the information be integral, full of love and light and information, full of joy and helping people everywhere. That's the main the main goal is us to for us to be a part of the ascension and building um, joy and light and uh, the next step in evolution. So thank you for uh, being here and supporting that. So much love. Oh, much love I, to you too, Jim. We appreciate I, your time and the love that you put into this. Oh, thank you. I This is my first time here for a long time because uh, 2016 has uh, kicked my butt as far as illnesses of concern. So, But now I'm feeling much better. So <laughs> we pray that, that that is all in the past. Yes, and welcome back, Jim. Yes, I am so happy to be back. I will do a meditation now, and we will bring to Kerr first. She does want to speak first. And I will see you later. Greetings. I am Takur. Welcome. It's nice to see you all today. I've come to give you an update on the meetings that we had at the end of February. I will not be taking any questions unless they pertain to the meetings that we had just recently, because there is a lot of information that is coming from the, these particular meetings. First of all, it was a very long session, and many of you I want to thank for being there and to speak to the different countries of the world. It is important that they hear other humans, their points of view, and what they would like to see happen. Believe it or not, these are very important to the 
swaying of the political powers to our favor, and we appreciate that. So thank you very much for your involvement in that. There were several of you that spoke and gave your opinions on different things and different ways to bring alien and human life together in a very appropriate and loving way. We are your neighbors, and one day we hope to be acting as such. At this point, we do interact with you, but not the way that we would like to. On saying that, I would like to let you know that there has been several different discussions about ways that you can come to the colonies that might be better, that might be more substantial, that might help you with your rememberings better. We did discuss the site to site, but of course, we knew that they were not going to approve of that yet. However, they are softening on their points with site to site. The reason for this is they know that it is an in inevitable that, our, that we and you will be someday together. They are frightened at the prospect that we would come sooner because they are the ones in office now. They would not mind if we came after they left off because then their power and prestige would not be questioned. But if, they, if we would come now, it would bring them into question and their power and their prestige and their prosperity. And so they're saying, if you just wait a little while, then we can let you do this. But I see what is happening. Some of them are older. Some of the older ones are starting to relent a little because they won't be in power very much longer. And so it will be easier for them to say, yes, I support that. But the younger ones that are coming up also see what is happening. And they know that eventually they will have to find a way to bring us into your presence. So that is what they are working on now. They are softening in their opinions toward us. They realize that we are not going to invade. They realize that the ones that are invading, they are trying to take care of now. I am very happy that this is happening. It brings us much hope. We know that there will be a time when they will relax their position. However, in the meantime, we are still working on that and we appreciate them listening to us. Now, there are other things that we discuss with them. Medical. We have given them many cures, many things that they can help their people with, but they have not yet rolled that out to the human population. That is another part of greed and another part of prosperity. They do not want to give up the different prescription drugs that would be involved with these cures. You see that many people take drugs for glaucoma, cancer, AIDS, things of this nature and they're very expensive and they make a lot of money so giving the cure out for these things would mean that they would have to change where they make their money or change how they make their money because we have given them cures for many of the things that they make money on now some of your population has had cures for some of these things in the past. The cures that we have ruled out, rolled out to them are actually even better and safer. So please write to your congressman or your parliament or your 
committees that are in charge to let them know that you know they have these benefits for you. I do not know if that will help, but at least they will know that you know. Another thing that we have been working on is diplomacy. The thing that comes between us sometimes is the language barrier. Some do not understand us as well because we have to interpret into so many languages. We have to bring the messages clearly into every different language that is provided or is assembled there. And many times there are ambiguous terms that they give to us, and ambiguous terms we give to them because of how things are translated. We have decided that there should be one universal language learned between all of them. We have come to the conclusion that English will be one, the galactic language will be one, and perhaps Spanish. We are not sure how this will work yet, but we are trying to bring things into a greater clarity. We are afraid that many of the terms and many of much of the information that we have given is not understood quite clearly enough. And that could be one of the problems that is causing them to hold back or be less trusting. We are now going to be more universal in our approach. This seems to be agreeable with them because there is much dispersion. <laughs> Another point from the meetings that has come to us is that they realize that our weapon systems are greater than theirs. They've always known this, of course. But they want to know if we are going to use them at any time for at any reason. And we ask the same question of them, of course. If they are going to use their weapons against us at any time for any reason. A great discussion broke out about protection. They realize that not all species are friendly. They realize that we are. And they would wonder if we would protect them against other species. Now this is a great debate because we are not to interfere with your basic life in general. We have done some work with your weather, seismic, things of this nature, but to be integrated with you on a personal level at this point, they do not want. However, they would not be opposed to us helping them with a war against other species. So this was a, a great debate that we had. And we have come to the conclusion that we must stay neutral. If some other species attacks you, we cannot be involved in that because that is not what we are here for. We are here for to help you evolve. We are here to bring you peace on our own terms, but we cannot start a war between ourselves and another species. That is not progress. Do you understand that? Yes. We, cannot, we cannot protect you in a way that they want us to. But yet, I do not see this happening. It would be foolish for another species to attack you at this time, knowing that there are other species that would defend. Grukvik Nier will not be one of those that would help defend. But there are other species that would. And that would be their decision. And we would stay away from that. 
There are many other points to the council that are very important, but I do not have all the time to tell you everything that was happening. I thought these were the main points of great discussions for you, thoughts that you would be very interested in. Also, they are interested in helping those that are sick go to the colonies. But we have not worked out a way to send you here or bring you here that is amicable with both sides. But I believe that will be the first test of sight to sight will be with those that need medical help and can only get it by being here and having operations done or some kind of procedure. We, are dis we discussed that for many hours as well. Many of your people, many of your politicians would like to have their ills taken care of, would like to be part of that program but cannot do it without including the populace. We will not do it without including the populace. Thanks. We will not just do it for the politicians and not for anyone else. And that is where the problem is. They would choose to just have us help them and no one else. Or help them and their families and no one else. But we will not do it that way. So discussion moves forward. Are there any questions about this meeting? Yes, I have a question here from Crow. Yes. Um, hello to Kerr. It's nice to speak with you again. Very nice, Krillak. Um, when it comes to these meetings, do you speak to the politicians or do you speak to the people that are controlling them? We speak to the politicians directly from different countries, the heads of different countries, and we bring humans along with us to speak to them as well. Many of you are very articulate and have great opinions on how things should be done, and so therefore we bring you as well. Some of you, about seven of you, spoke at this particular meeting at different times at when it was appropriate for your message to be brought forth. And they were very impressed by the fact that you knew us as well as you did. They were impressed that you understood the position of the different countries and why you do the things you do. So does that answer your question? Yes. Very well. Continue. I have a question. Hello, Sakara. Who am I speaking to? This is Sarah. 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 And I just want to say thank you for all that you are doing and for all Gersikmir and any other beings that are helping out. They're doing to discuss this with our government on Earth. Um, I just had a question. Those who spoke, were they speaking holographically? Yes. When we bring humans to the meeting, all must be in holographic if they're on our side of the opinion. Mm -hmm. We cannot bring them physically if, because we are not allowed to be there physically. We must be there holographically. And so there, if we bring any representatives to the meeting, they must come in astral or holographic form because this is how the rules are with your governments. Yes, and um, the ones who were able to speak, you said they were able to speak clearly to the different governments. Um, it, it's interesting because I would like to know how it was perceived from the other side because I like to understand the conversation from many different angles. So yes, there, there are many different angles to the conversation and that is why it, the conversations go on for so long. 
is mm-hmm. there are so many different opinions from so many different angles, and therefore they are all addressed. Okay. And which are the countries who may be still uh, holding back, maybe? It is the larger countries, of course, the ones that have the greatest to lose or the greatest right. gain. Those are the ones that cannot decide whether they should move forward or not. They sit, as you would, will, on the fence at times. They go back and forth and tell us one thing and then bring up something else. Many times contradictory conversation comes forth when there are three or more members of a country present. They may have several different opinions from a single country. Mm-hmm. So therefore, it is as it is. And we do address them as thoroughly as possible. Now, there was a question in the room. Do the political people also uh, appear in holographic form? No. We appear in holographic form to them. They are present on the earth and they do not assume any kind of other form. We are the ones that have to uh, experience the holographic form for them because they do not want us on the earth. That is part of the rules. Are they using the computers to talk to each other or are they really there? They are really there in most cases. Some of them use monitors to speak to us if they cannot be there in present. 80% of those that we speak to are present. The groups come and go. All is recorded by all different species and all different groups. Therefore, they all know where they stand and what has been spoken beforehand. There's a feed for all different kind of information and your planet has much information about us through these different kinds of communications. They have recorded many hours of our times together. But during the meetings, yes, it is not uncommon for the president of a, of a company, country to leave and someone else step in in his place because they have other obligations, of course. But yet, everybody is aware of what is going on. Where was the meeting physically? This is not to be announced. They, are, they happen in different parts of the world, usually in places that are not very populated and different countries. On all seven continents we have met, but not at this, in the same place twice. Were these conversations part of the G20 event? I did not hear the question. Were these conversations between the humans and the aliens part of the G20 event, the group 20 that just happened? I still did not hear it. G20, it's an economic conference. She was wondering if you Ah, no, this was not part of your economic conference. Economics were discussed. However, that was a different conference altogether. Okay, thank you. I have a question. If we can't remember visiting you in the holographic, have any techniques where you can like visit us in our minds? while we can remember it um, other than channeling, have they been discussed? Those things have been discussed. Memories are not seemingly too important to your governments, unless it's their memories. So, but they are willing to discuss many different ways of helping you remember more about positive learning experiences. Now, that being said, they have yet to define what that means. 20 hours at one meeting was spent on defining that one sentence. Can you understand why? Because some of them do not view you remembering as a positive thing for Earth. But many have come around to understand that if
they remember the information and not the people that they met. It would be good. But one is connected to the other. Yeah. And we would deem that if you cannot remember the people, what good is the information if it just appears out of nowhere? So we are still discussing that. But they, like I said earlier, I am encouraged by the fact that they are willing to speak about it at great lengths. That is encouraging that they did not shut off the conversation at an hour or an hour and a half, but continued to discuss it for many hours from many different angles. So this is actually a positive action on the parts of the governments. They do like the fact that you have interesting and positive information. They would prefer that they were given it first and they understood it before you do. That is not likely to happen and we explained why. Because many of the times when government officials have visited the colonies they have brought weapons or something that was not tolerated by Gurkfik Nir along with them or ideas or implants or things of this nature that were not especially wanted or needed. If they could do so without all this protection, as they call it, then perhaps we could get a little farther with them on the colonies. But they are frightened to come alone. Any other questions? <clears throat> um, yes, I do here. Um, Sheer is next. Hey, Tiko, how are you? I am well, thank you. Uh, I just want to ask if there are any more meetings scheduled for two, 2016. There are usually three meetings in one year, not always. Sometimes there is only two. So the next one is perceived to be in the late part or later part of July or August. I see. Okay. Thank you. Hello, Takur. Hello. I have a question. Are are there any politicians who are listening to our opinions? Are there yeah. any that would be willing to listen to, like, human colony members' opinions about these things? Is there somebody that we can physically speak to about this kind of thing without bringing them any kind of weird thoughts? Well, that is why we brought them to the meetings. They would not speak to you individually, usually. They would, because that would mean you would have to let many people know that you were coming to speak to them, their secretaries, other people, and there would be many questions on why you were coming to speak to them personally and you are just a regular normal citizen. Of course they could make up many many excuses, however they do not want to risk that because they're being bugged as much as anyone else and this information could leak. Therefore, that is why we bring you, several of you, to the conferences with us, so that you may speak directly to them, give them a, your opinion, give them the information that is necessary so that they can know that humans are aware and have great ideas and great suggestions for how to handle certain situations. Now, not all are open to listening to the humans. I should say listening to their constituents or their peers or whatever you want to call them. But they do record it and listen later. They do not all have positive comments on what you have to say. But I see that there are less and less comments as time goes on. Well, could there be another uh, a forum created? Maybe if we had like a, a blog forum or something where we could input our ideas and then those ideas could be submitted to them electronically and then 
as long as they can get our information or get our point of view, whichever it is, and then they can decide to take whatever actions from there. Yes, we have already done that in the past. We have already brought your views and opinions electronically to them. Now, the only problem with that is that these opinions and views can be electronically created by anyone. They've, I would prefer that humans come and speak for themselves. They also say, oh, it is possible that they are brainwashed. However, we know that the humans that have spoken to your politicians made it very clear that they are very well informed and are not brainwashed. And they already, they as well know that this is true. But electronically enhanced or electronically passed on information is dubious. Okay, well maybe we can come to a point where we can do things physically and be accepted and at least be heard. And that is what we are w working toward and have much discussion with. This uh, last meeting was very, very long and that gives us great hope because they were willing to extend the meeting another 24 hours just to hear all the different opinions. So it was a p very positive meeting in my opinion because they gave us much more time to present and to be honest and open and present information in a way that could be understand understood properly by all s sections of your planet. Okay, thank you, Takura. I would like to put out there that I would like to speak with anybody personally who would be willing to uh, to meet, and it can be done discreetly or through other other ways. There's ways to be discreet, Absolutely. But if I would they, like to put that out. They have a differing between them. Some would accept it and some would not. Therefore, the ruling is that it would not be done at this time. However, I know that people like Sheer and Nivi and yourself and a few others would like to speak to the governments directly. And there are others of you that would definitely like to do this. It is being considered. Okay, thank you, Takur. Uh, well, Carolina is uh, next. Hello, Takur. Mutrioff. Hello, Carolyn. How are you? I'm okay, thank you. Uh, my question is, are the humans who are representing us in holographic form consciously aware of it and the ideas they're representing? And also, is there a way for us to contribute or help them in any way? Those that have been sent to the council, were some of them were notified ahead of time so they knew they were going to be going. They already had their uh, information prepared and no not all of them remembered being there but they will have some subcon subconscious awareness of it now there will be better and more understandable and appreciative ways of doing things in the future as we work with your countries and politicians things are getting a little easier to for at least the people that are appearing at the conferences should be able to remember that they were there yes yeah, a question um, is this I'm assuming involving the inner earth ancient beings the inner earth ancient beings are not part of your political ruling system on earth However, some of them do appear and show up there. Many of them don't speak because they don't have an opinion on this, but they are curious about what is happening with the ascension and the alignment of humans with aliens. So many of the subterranean cultures 
do appear at the at the conference. They don't always stay, but they are. It is a. The governments are aware that they are there. They do not know where they are from. They just see them as aliens, as well as, well as all the rest. Teka, is there any way we can contribute to uh, these humans in any way? I did not hear the part, first part of the question. <laughs> yes, always. Please, when you talk to us, or whenever you have times that you channel or speak to us directly in your thought processes or out loud, please give suggestions. Please give information so that we may know where you are coming from. Perhaps you are someone that should be able to, or could, or should speak at the next meeting. Thank you so much. I love you. I love you as well. Okay, Krell, did you have another question? <coughs> uh, yes, I'll let's occur. Um, was the topic of holographic projections discussed at the meeting? Absolutely. We have realized that they had been, at this point we realize now, that uh, there is a chemical that comes from the insectoid people. It's part of their metabolic or metabolism that if put on a human being and absorbed into the skin would not allow holographic to attach when they're coming to the colonies. Now, we can work around that, but it is a great amount of people that want to come in the holographic. There is a chemical that would break that down and allow the holographic to be attached after a while. And we did work with those people that came to the conference with that particular uh, chemical. However, many of you have been given this chemical and so cannot come to the colonies without being treated first. So it was a sabotage on the insectoids part. That is all I will say about that because it, there, there was much discussion about that at the meetings as well. There are some insectoids and reptilians that help different parts of your governments and societies. They are now starting to understand that these people, alien species, are not working for their better good and have discovered some things that they will deal with. That is all I will say. I do not want to say anything particularly negative because that is not really fair to other species that are working on Earth with your governments. Okay. Are there any questions with the people there with you, Takur? I do not know. Can we ask them, please? I, yes. I know you didn't want to talk more about this chemical, but is there an antidote available to humans, or is that something we would only be... Yes, able? there is an antidote available to humans. However, the application of it is has to be very, done very carefully. So that is why we only did the ones that were coming to the conference. We will work with others in the future. It's a time-consuming process because the insectoid element, we'll call it, soaks through into the bloodstream and causes the astral not to be able to form the light on the outside. So therefore, we must cleanse the bloodstream of these people that have this chemical within them. That is time-consuming from this distance. Is there anything we can do to protect ourselves from this chemical? Not at this point. It's already been done. Thank you. 
and you don't know, you know not when it will happen because all it needs to do is rub a, a shoulder up against someone who has it. Mm. <clears throat> yes, it's very it moves very quickly. Mm, very nice. Anyone else have any questions there? Can we ask? Yes. Is there another question? No, oh, not here. So I guess we're we are finished with talking about the meetings for today and we want to thank you so much for coming to tell us this information to Kerr. It's so wonderful to hear all the great news. Thank you, and I am appreciative to everyone who has input into this matter and those of you who have spoken at the conferences. You know who you are for the most part. And different ones of you have spoken at different conferences. But this last one, seven different humans spoke at this conference, and that is the most that has had involvement up to this time. Usually it's only three or four. So we see that human interaction is increasing and is very important. Thank you. Have a wonderful day and normal stay. Normal stay. Thank you. Nice, um, I will leave you now. Yes. I've been called. I am Gabriel. Oh, hello, Gabriel. It's so wonderful to have you here with us today. It is wonderful to be here. I assume there must be questions for me. Oh, yes, of course there are questions. But first, do you have a message for us that you would like to give us today? I, I have a message for humankind. Wonderful. You are all in the process of gr growing and defining yourselves. You are all in the process of finding who you really are in this life. You are learning about spirituality in a way that you've never learned it before. You are learning about positive and negative and how they interact and how one is influenced by the other. I know that all of you intend to bring goodness to the earth and with your intentions comes growth. With your intentions comes actions because there is no intention that can be set forth that does not help you to cause an action of some sort. The mere intention of goodness, of understanding, of love, sends that out from you. It is an action within itself. And I thank you and give you honor and respect for following the ways of the heart and the light. God himself could not know all futures without you knowing yourself. Because why is it not your soul that is God? He gives you free will. So what does that mean? Does that mean you are predestined 
to be someone. Not necessarily. But you have all the potential to be a god in many ways. Is there any questions? Yes, I have Carolina first. There is also someone in the room after Carolina. Okay, we will certainly do that. Hello, Angel Gabriel. Greetings. Much love. Much love to you as well. Um, I don't have a question. I just wanted to uh, uh, have this opportunity to thank you for being around us all the time. Um, I think about you all the time. Um, my gratitude for being around my son as well. Uh, you're very welcome here anytime. I love your presence. Thank and you. And I love you. The angels in all nine realms have come close to the earth as of recent to help the in ascension to grow and to ignite and to be greater. We will not leave your side. Thank you so much. I love you. I love you as well. Okay, what other now questions? in the room with you? Yes, it is John. John, how are you, Gabriel? I am wonderful. So you're writing a class about how to connect to your angels. And I thought, is there anything you'd like to tell the group about that class, the intentions of it, the people involved in it, and what your expectations might be? I could go on and on about that. However, how to connect to your own personal angels. Now, you can connect to all angels in some ways because none of us are out of your jurisdiction. But there are certain angels that for certain needs can be called. And your personal angel you may not know the name of, but you can find out after they have come and ministered to you. You can definitely know that you've been ministered by an angel. Now, I and Michael and Raphael, Metatron, many of the other ones, Ariel, Gakiel, Zandalfon, Sadgiel, I could go on and on naming the angels of the heavens in all the different realms. But you have special angels for yourself. You were born with special angels around you. There is not one soul that can say that there is no angel around them unless they have denied that they exist or denied that God exists. If you do this, then they are not responsive. Because you are not responsible. But do not turn them away. They are of great help and of great love. Is there something else you would like me to tell? There, I could go on and on, but I do. It to start one part of it goes for for a long period of time. Right. So the class that you're is there anything particular you'd like to say about that, or is that for a future time? It is for each individual to gra grasp and understand what they need to get out of that class. One person will find that they have received a blessing from the class, and someone else will discover that they have found protection from the class. Other people will find that they have found an opening of understanding to different realms and different things around them, to each his own, because you are all unique, just as you all have a unique vision of God. You all have a unique understanding 
of how the angels will work in your lives or be present or if you can even see them or not. Your belief system, as we speak many times these days, is part of all this. Your faith, what is your faith? Your faith is that invisible contract, that invisible connection to those things unseen. And, you're, and what can it do? It can bring the unseen into the vision. It can bring the unseen into your vision. That's what faith can do. That's what belief can do. It can bring a vision of what cannot be seen to you. And what does that do? That encourages you. That edifies you. That gives you meaning. Because they would not appear to you or become visible to you without purpose. Okay. Is there anyone else? Yes, we have Shran. Shran. Hello, Gabriel. Thank you for coming today. Um, I had a question regarding um, the breath. Can you expand some more for our understanding about uh, breath during meditation or breath during daily living? Breath? Is, did you say breathing? Yes, breathing. Ah, the breath is very important. Of course, it sustains life as long as it has all the other things that comes with it. But it is most important. Humans have gotten away from their original deep breathing. They used to be very active. Many still are. Exercise and things of this nature. But it was more natural in the past. Your breathing was deep and full because you worked hard in the fields, collecting things, cooking, cleaning, in the past. And you've evolved beyond all this physicality in some ways, but the deep breathing is still necessary. Why? Because it is part of who you are in your essence. You must bring in the deep breathing so that it cleanses out portions of the body. The lymphatic system. Some of the systems in the body depend on the activation of deep breathing. When you breathe deeply, you activate the entire body. You fill the entire body with a much healthier thought process. Not if you're in a gaseous area or somewhere that it's, it's harmful, but in nature. When you breathe deeply, you're filling your body with life-affirming energy that energy of nature that is all around you. You're also activating systems within your body to cleanse themselves. The lymphatic system, for one. There are other systems as well. I could go on. But the brain also needs fresh air. The entire body needs fresh air. And if you breathe without depth, your whole life. These things will tend to clog up. They will tend to become old and age, age much faster because you are not giving breath. You're not breathing the way you should. Three times a day you should at least Breathe deeply and let the air fill you and hold that in and then breathe it far out. 
what happens when you breathe it out? You breathe out a lot of those toxins that are collecting in your body. It's so healthy to breathe deep. It's part of who you are. It may seem, seem unnatural now in this day and age for deep breathing to happen. However, it is not. You need it. It is part of your ancestry. It's part of your physiology. <laughs> Is there any other questions? Yes. When you were talking about um, us having angels with us, is that our like our spirit guide angel, or is it over and above that? It's over and above that, actually. Um, you you do have a spirit guide, and they're, but they're not necessarily angels. Angels are around you when you need them. Have any of you experienced what an angel can do? Your spirit guides can do things as well, but when it's an angel, you know it. And some of you just don't feel like you are good enough to have an angel. That is not so. Everyone is good enough to have an angel. Everyone has purpose, and that's why there's an angel. Do you understand? Yes. That is a very, very, I'm not going deeply into that right now. There is so much depth that could go into that. Because as you personally accept your angelic portion, because that angel is attached to you in more than one way. Do you understand that? Yes. That's why they are there. We could de delve deep into that, and the class will do that. But you yourself, must be apportioned to your soul and your angel and all the balances around spiritually. When you balance out spiritually, how can not the rest of your body help but become a little more balanced? Now, there are those that have contracts with maladies and things of this nature. However, remember, there is free will. Free will can block out some of those things. But if it is a necessary thing for you to carry these burdens, then in the Oversoul you will understand why. Okay. There's six questions I think in the internet. I cannot read that. Okay. We do There's have. There's a question. Go ahead. Okay, go ahead. I'm just wondering if, if you have any messages that may help me in the journey that may help others as well. There are there are messages to help you and others, and that is connect yourself with the faith that things can happen in a way that will affirm you and make you whole. You must believe it. You must believe it. You cannot be whole without believing that you can be. You cannot be whole without believing that you can be. It just does not happen. So, gather up your faith. Gather up your love. Gather up all those things within you that are positive And bring them out and share them. Because in doing so, you also heal yourself. Continue. Okay, we have Cher next. Hello, Gabriel. Greetings. Greetings. I actually once channeled you. Yes. Um, I was wondering if you have a message for me and if you can tell me about 
which uh, angels am I connected to, like my personal um, angels, as you said it. There are many connected to you angelically, but your most private and personal angel is La Sandia. Okay. But you also have Gabriel, myself. <laughs> you also have Raphael, Michael. We all come to you at one time or another. Okay. There For are many. For a certain purpose? I did not hear that. You all a come certain to me. purpose. Yeah. Oh, of course. There is always always purpose for our presence. I see. And do you have a message for me? Not at this time. But oh. I will have a message for you when we speak again. <laughs> okay. Thank you very much and much love to you and gratitude. Excellent. Hello, Gabriel. This is Guru Dan. Yes. Have a couple of questions from members, if it's okay. That is well. Yes. Uh, a question from our friend Astrid. She asks how the members of the group should best use the energy of the new moon upcoming, and also maximize the energy of the upcoming spring equinox, and if there are any other important planetary humankind ascension updates that you can offer. There. It has been an unusual air era of power for the equinoxes and the full moons. Since the fall of your last year, and even before then, the powers of the earth have been increased and multiplied. And the new moon and the solstice, I believe, fall together again, do they not? Yes, this, I believe so. Mm -hmm. These are two different energies that when combined are very powerful. And when happening on the same time like you have in this last era of solar powers and alignments, grasp onto these energies to fulfill the great missions that are coming to your lives. Bring in that energy to fulfill your purpose in this life. It is a time the beginning of the ascension is so important. And so these things have fallen together to make you more important and more powerful. The people alive at this time will have energy such as never been experienced except for thousands of years ago. And therefore will help you along your way in your purpose to keep the ascension moving. And many of you will gather a meaning for your life and gather something more than just a normal existence. And the future will capture this, for you will not be forgotten, many of you. This is a time that will be remembered. I have a question from uh, member Jasmina. She wants to know if you have any messages for her and what number is her vibration and what does a vibration number mean? Uh, I'm, I'm not aware of any of that. If you can uh, offer clarity, that would be awesome. Each person has their own vibrational energy. Some people are able to achieve great numbers of vibration, such as 10 or 12 or 14, and some people are not able to do that. Some are only able to achieve nines and tens. Why is this? It is because of how their contract was made before they entered this realm. Now, to tell you what your vibrational number would be 
would actually not be giving you enough information. Because I could say you're at a 4.2, but if you're if you are able to reach a 15, that's not very high. But if you're only able to reach a 9, then your 4.2 is almost halfway to your fullest purpose. Does that make sense to you? Yes, now, it does. Do not be so intrigued by your vibration at this time. Yours is very high, Jasmina. Just know that it is getting greater and that the love, the more love you can generate for your, from yourself, the greater the possibility is for it to grow. You see, love is the vibration that's measured. Love is the vibration that's measured. When God looks down, do you think he sees that you stole the candy bar? Do you think he sees that you told a lie? Do you see, think he sees that you are late for work? What he's looking at is the potential for your love to come out of you and into the world. The example of pure fire that can change the world. He's not looking for these tiny little insignificant things, but your love. Not to say that you should go out and steal a candy bar and then it won't matter. That's not what I'm saying. But these are insignificant compared to the love that you generate for one another. Bond yourself together in this. And you, you know what? If you bond yourself together in love and greatness and fire, there will be no need to steal a candy bar. There will be no need to worry about these small, in, unimportant things. There will only be bringing yourself together with others and burning for love and burning for the ascension and burning for God. All other things will melt away. It's not that you stop smoking. It's not that you stop drinking. These things are good. However, the love that you generate far surpasses any bad habits, swearing, or anything. And you know what? It will burn these things away eventually. And you won't want to do it. You could if you want, but you won't have to. Do you understand? Be on fire with love. Thank you, Gabriel. That's a wonderful message. Okay, Christine. Continue. Hello. Hello. And blessings to you. I and was blessings to you. <laughs> I was wondering if you could tell me. Um, I do recce on um, animals as well as my own um, pets. And I don't really see a change in them. Does that mean it's not working or that it's just the way I'm looking at it? It is the way you're looking at it. All healing helps. Now, you may not know how it's helping. Are you thinking, oh, I haven't seen a physical change, so there, I must not be helping physically. That is not necessarily true. Okay. To, if someone were to look at you each day, would they know how you are feeling inside? No. Not necessarily. When you, you look at your animals, do you know if they're happy or sad? I think so. Yes. Do you know if they're feeling sick? 
Yeah, uh, well, see, that's why I'm wondering if um, it's changing because I still see um, them uh, with the same uh, limping or something like that. So I, I think I'm not... Do not stop. It is, it is not for you to stop. Okay. They get your energy. It could be affecting them in ways you have no idea. Even if they still limp, it might hurt less. Even if they seem the same, there might be differences and changes. Do not doubt that your healing energy is any less powerful than anyone else's. Okay. Much Thank love you. to you because uh -huh. when, when you do your healing on these animals, it also heals yourself in some way. Believe that. I still have arthritis. It's not working. <laughs> That's because you said it's not working. Oh. It's working. Excellent. <laughs> you must believe that it works. If you say that it is not working, it won't. Okay. But it is working, but you just have to realize it. All righty. <laughs> Humans. <laughs> Much love. Much love to you. <laughs> Much health. Get better. Okay, we have Sarah next. Hello, Ar Archangel Gabriel. Hello. Love to you. <laughs> love to you. I just want to say thank you for helping me. On ah. the artistic journey, I have so many things to do. There um, are many things for you to do. And thank you for helping many. Oh, thank you. Um, I was just wondering if there are any messages for my upcoming journey. Um, <laughs> yes, you can feel what I'm feeling at the moment. Yes, you are feeling quite nervous and and uh, jerky, nervous and jerky, because you are not sure how these things are going to come to pass. Yes. I understand. Be strengthened by the fact that it is necessary for you to be who you are and give the messages and healings that you are going to give. Do not doubt that these are not going to happen. Why would God not want you to spread the blessing of love and healing? So therefore, it will come about, perhaps in more miraculous ways than you can possibly understand. Thank you very much. Um, is there Spirit is with you. Thank you. Yes, I thank them all the time. <laughs> yes, I know. <laughs> and um, is there anything I need to know before I go? It's only money. It's only money. Do not think that it is a great thing for money to appear. Money is available from everywhere. It's only money. But the gifts that you will give are much greater than that. Mm -hmm. And I, I'm to be traveling with another person, am I not? There could be someone else, yes. Okay. It is not necessary, though, but it would be a help. Okay. Thank you. You are welcome. Much love to you. Much love. Okay, Nevi, are you ready? Yes. Uh, hello, uh, Gabriel. How are you? I am well. Um, I want to ask you about an uh, experience I had a few times. Um, before falling asleep, sometimes I drift into uh, seeing images and having a negative feeling. Sometimes uh, it expresses in a physical way like uh, hard, hardship breathing and, and stuff. 
And last time it happened, I called upon you and uh, Michael until it passed. Um, do you have any guidance on how to distance myself from uh, those uh, situations? Before you even lay down, call on us. Why call on us afterwards? Call on us before. Then you will not have the heaviness to deal with. You will not have anything or any problems. But before you lay down, thank God that you're going to have a restful sleep. Thank God that this heaviness is not going to be there. Thank us for coming to help you. Not that we need your thankfulness, but that's we, it's something for us to hear, something for us to work with so that we can help you. Yes, I understand. Why, why not avoid it altogether? It, it happens uh, so rarely that I don't even take it into account. Well, pray to God before you go to bed every night and it won't happen anymore. Okay, thank you very much. I pass the mic. Hello, Angel Gabriel. Hello. Elena. Uh, much love. I would, I would like to ask, um, I want to start recording songs. And, and always there's um, some, something that happens to prevent me from going to the studio. Can you help me out with how I, how I can easily go on this path? Yes. Thank God that he is going to get you there. And thank God ahead of time for that. The thing is, I see right now, it was not the right time for you to go. The reason why you did not go, it was not ready quite yet. When you do go, it will be the perfect time. It will be the time when things will happen in a way that are ju is just perfect. And you will have no doubt that this was the right moment. But do not worry. It will come. Do not doubt that something is holding you back, but that the perfect moment just has not arrived. And that's what I see. Thank you. Much love. You're welcome. Okay. Then I, want to, I want to talk about that for a moment. Some people feel that they have been held back from doing things, held back from certain things for so long. Perhaps it's not the right time. Perhaps there is a time that will come together to make it so much greater. Perhaps the moment that it is coming into culmination or into perfection has not arrived yet. Be patient and keep faith. Sometimes it's not the right time. Yes. Okay, we have John Ali next. Continue. Hello, Gabriel. Can you hear me okay? Hello? Hello? I hear you. You were soft, but I hear you. Oh, well, I'll see if I can change that up a little bit. That's better. That's better. Is this even better? Yes. Okay, great. First of all, I, it's wonderful to put voice to communication with you, and I thank you for being here today. Thank you, and thank you for being here today. You're quite welcome. I do have several questions, but the most important for me is a question that has come from reading the Oracle of Ephesus through Franklin. Yes. And I, my question is, is God's knowingness and omnipotence furthered by our own soul's experiences, each of our yes. soul's experiences? Okay, so... Thank you, because I, I think that settles my unsettledness. <laughs> well, let me tell you more about that. Okay. 
God in his infinite wisdom about each soul has made them each individual and each special in a way that no one else can possibly imagine. And you may say, oh, we're all very much alike in some ways. Or all of us have certain similarities. But your uniqueness is special. Do not doubt that. God's uniqueness in you is there for a purpose. And now you are trying to find what that purpose is. Exactly. I find that you are unique and that it will be something surprising and loving and wonderful. <laughs> Thank you. That's, that is one of the things, one of my wonderments that I'm trying hard to focus on that just to allow the thing is many people have many different thoughts about what they want to do or what their purpose is but they have to accept they have to accept the highest joy in their life and work with it and that will lead them to many many jo other joys does that make sense to you? Uh, in in a short way, a small way, it makes sense. How do we learn to accept joy in the fullest sense? Ah, you learn to accept joy by accepting the greatest resonation that comes to you. What is it that you want to do the most? I know that many others have spoken about that in your world, but it is so true. God has given you a greatest joy. Maybe more than one thing is a greatest joy. But the thing is, you must believe, you must understand that that will lead into a greater life as well. My greatest joy is to serve God. However, I am learning or have been, it's been suggested that um, I'm serving man rather than God, but my belief system is that God is in every man. So by serving the needs of man, I am serving God. Correct. Thank you. Do not let anyone tell you who you are or what you're doing. You know in yourself what your joys are and what your mission is. If you are serving man out of the love of God, how is that wrong? Well, I'm... Good question. Thank you. <laughs> because I'm also finding out more about myself. And as I find out more about myself, I, I feel like I'm becoming more integrated as a human. But that integration includes my spirituality, which is of God. Who you are is the most important thing in this life. Why? Because God made you. God is your soul. Find yes. out who you are in God, and you cannot go wrong. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. And one final uh, question. Do you have any messages for me from anyone? There is one. <laughs> And they say, this is just the beginning for you. You are now, just now, starting to understand who you really are. And that is the beginning of a great joy. Thank you very much, Gabriel. And thank you. Thanks to whomever sent that message. <laughs> it was someone from a past life, a relative. Oh, okay. Are you able to say who? They will tell you themselves. Great. Thank you very much. I look forward to that time. And blessings to you and all those who have come through you for me. God bless you. Okay. I have a question now from Slava. Yes. He says, I wonder how you are to perceive Earth in different ways. Some of us called Earth like kindergarten. Some of us called, oh, excuse me here. 
but what was the earth for you? I see earth like a beautiful crystal of collective consciousness and I believe earth is connected with many many crystals is it correct please share your perspective earth to me is many things it is not just one thing because there are many different kinds of life many different kinds of existences on earth to me when I first came to earth it was like a small child it needed nurturing it needed love it needed feeding, needed wisdom and guidance. And it had all these other elements along with it. Of course, you just don't see a child when you look at the earth. You see the trees, the mountains, the waterfalls, the great beauty of the earth as well. That is not just mankind, but it is all life in general. So when I look at the earth, I see a beautiful, co beautiful collage of life and energy and lights coming from all different perspectives of different colors and different energies. And yes, the crystals and beautiful connections to the stars and the other planets. Earth is just one place that is among millions and millions of places and I see it as a beautiful beautiful kaleidoscope of energies and understandings oh yes that sounds so beautiful okay one more question and is it correct that our angels are our aspects nah not necessarily your aspect from the soul level comes from God, not from angels. Angels were created. So therefore, you may find that your angel upholds or complements your aspect, but is not the direct aspect of you. Mm, that's beautiful. Okay, that's it from Slava, and now we have Karel. Uh, yes, hello. Hello. I was visited earlier this morning by a being. Um, I was not able to see him, but I was able to touch him. I was wondering if you could have any information on who this being was. This being was from the canine species. That species seems to have a lot of interest in you in many aspects. They, they find you a fascinating person and you're very, very inclusive of them. And so that is another area that they find very um, good. They want to be around you. They want to know more about you. And the name of the being was Shunskala. Was it male or female? I could not tell. It was a male. Uh, is there any information that I should know about at this time? There is information coming to you. but it is not my place to deliver it. But it is coming. Ah, yes. okay. Thank you. You are welcome. Okay, now I have a question from Sam. He ah. says, I have two spirit guides and two angels. Can you help me find out who are the two angels and what specifically or what specialty they have in guiding me. <laughs> yes, I can name them for you. But you should already know their specialties because they work with you on them from day to day. One is on your growth of your spirit and on who you are 
in a personal way. The other one is how to bring all this energy to you as well. There is much more energy that the second angel has that you have not yet accepted. But it is coming. Wonderful. Okay, from Michelle. Yeah, thank you so much for all you do in my life. I call on you, Michael and Raphael, when healing is there, any others that would complete the group. Is it possible for you to tell me the names of my daughter and son's personal angel so they can connect with them? One moment, please. With permission, I can tell you that your daughter's personal angel is Ladkiel. And your son's personal angel is Eskiel. Okay, and are there, are, are there any messages for her? Just continue on your path. <coughs> your emotions have been strong. You have been up and you've been down. But your healing remains constant no matter what. Yes. That's wonderful news. Okay, Ina, you are next. Hello, Gabriel. Yes. This is Ina. <sighs> an honor no. speaking to you. It's an honor speaking to you. Um, do you have a message for me or from you or from someone else? You're going through some changes at this time. And let them come as they may. <coughs> it may be difficult at first. But let the things that are supposed to fall away, fall away. I do not know who that was from, but it did come down through this area. Does it make any sense to you? Um, I think so, yes. <laughs> Very well. Um, thank you. Um, just another question. Um, when people decide to end their life before their time, um, can they go immediately into the light or do they stuck here? That depends. Let me explain. Those that end their life prematurely cannot move through the veil quickly. They must process all the different things that life has brought them first before that they can understand the glory of the Oversoul or what you might call heaven or might call anything that Earth calls the afterlife. There is a sort of detention that they must deal with because they are not ready to come into the afterlife. And this may take some time sort of detention. because it is not a pleasant ordeal. But eventually, they will come into the afterlife. But it is not as easily done. Do they have to repeat their lesson? Ah, a question was, do they have to repeat their lesson? It depends on which lesson they did not learn. Perhaps they will choose to repeat that lesson in an earlier life or in the next life, or perhaps they will wait. That is up to them in the Oversoul once they get there. So people do stuck here when they, when they end the life. They cannot go right into the light and yeah. reincarnate basically again. There are some that choose to stay around the earthly realms. They feel it 
that they are protecting someone or they feel that there is a need for them not to move into the light for some reason. These people are not at rest. But it what about... It what not, about, does not necessarily mean that they committed suicide. Some have. And are not willing to do the process yet. But there are, there are those that want to stay around the earthly realms. And they are the ones you call ghosts. Okay, what about those that know about the light and that actually want to go into the light? Are they able to just go after that? Or I didn't, what was the question? I didn't. So when people end their lives, um, when they say, okay, enough, and then um, they know about no. the light, and they want to go into the light. They don't want to stay here. They want, they want to yes, go into they the They want to go into the light, but like I said, there will, depending on the individual and what has happened and the reasons for them taking their life, there will be a detention, and they have to go through some things to understand that they are not ready for the, the light yet and it might take some time for them to get there but they will eventually get there okay what what would that be in my case in your case you are still alive yes still right now yes would I be able to go into the light or would I have a deten detention everyone that ends their life prematurely will have the detention now, for what reasons and for how long that is determined by God. Okay, thank you. That's You're it. Welcome. Okay, thank you so much. And now Kim would like to speak with you, if she could, please. Yes. Hello, Archangel uh, Gabriel. Hello. I know you spend a lot of time with my daughter and I thank you and appreciate your love for her so much. I know she's safe in your arms and within your wings and she's journeying and just loving spirit with you. So I want to say thank you so, so much. I appreciate it. It was her that started you on your path. <laughs> yes. It was, yes. She but. is so grateful that you have come to a great purpose and will continue <laughs> to move forward and become beloved by the world. Yes. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. I love you. Much love. Okay, and now can I ask for a blessing for us today? There is another question first. Okay. Yes. Um, I recently had an experience with my mom in the hospital with Raphael, my dad, and I just wanted to say uh, thank you for that. You are welcome. Raphael is close to your father, and so he is the one that had brought him into that area and into that blessing. Thank you. Yes. I'm wondering about um, the length of working with someone and doing healing work. How do you know how long to keep doing healing work? I had a friend who had a heart attack and I can't communicate with her because of her husband doesn't want to communicate with her. <laughs> so I'm wondering how often or how, how do I know? The question is I don't think you could hear it is how long should he work with someone at a distance that he is not in communication with that has had a heart attack and he was sending energy to them for healing. Now the answer to that is never stop. Even if they are well, even if their heart attack has been taken care of, all can use that energy. And if one has had a heart attack, or an ailment such as this, energy given is always appreciated and always helpful. Continue to send her energy for as long as you feel necessary. That would be up to you because she could always use it. And how about just regular patience? Is there a time frame that you should keep? It's not a time frame. Um, when you. <coughs> 
when you're working to heal someone. It's not a time frame that you should be looking at. It's an energy frame. If you feel them taking your energy and the energy of the universe and the energy of all those that are helping, you know that you need to continue with that healing. If you feel the energy is starting to wane or get less, then you know that the healing is about done. But that does not mean you should stop sending the energy. It just lets you know when the energy is not flowing as strongly and lets you know that the healing is about done. Does that answer that question? Very good. Okay, and if everybody is finished in the room there, then could we please have a blessing? Yes. Thank you so much. We so much appreciate it. Thank you. It was very nice to be here. I can feel the love and joy and kindness. Let's pray on that area. Yes. Dear God, Father of the universe, Mother, Father God, Bring down to the earth this special love and joy and light that is necessary for the world to be healed, for the world to continue and become a beautiful light within the universe. Already we have seen so many beautiful things come from this planet, but we've already seen also dark things as well. Let us cover those dark things with light. We praise you and thank you for all the goodness, love, and prayers that have been answered in your name. Let us be of good health and of good joy towards one another and always giving thanks for the things that are coming, for the blessings that are for here for you to take and you use. Do not ever believe that nothing is out of your reach because God in his great abundance can give you whatever you need if it is his will. We thank you and praise you for all those things that make you God and make you perfect and make you omnipotent, omniscient, all-loving. Bring to us a sense of understanding. Let our perception of you grow greater so that we may know more of you and know how much more love there is. With all this we pray. Amen. Mm, amen. Thank you so much, Gabriel. You are now welcome. can we bring Jim back for us? Absolutely. Thank you so much. God bless you all. Oh, bless you too, and everyone. Okay, when well we're bringing Jim back, we have a couple of people that have stepped forward and would like to do blessings today. So we'll wait for Jim to come all the way back, and then we'll do our blessings. <coughs> Hello. Hi, Jim. Oh. How are you hey, doing? Hey, how are you? <laughs> Very oh, well, thank you. Oh, you brought some beautiful yeah. messages to us today. Thank you so much. Oh, very good. I'm glad. Excellent. Oh, yes. Yes, just beautiful. Archangel Gabriel had some wonderful messages for everyone. Oh, good. Great. Thanks. So much love. Thank you. Is anybody out there going to do blessings? Yes, we have uh, oh. a couple people here. We have Sarah. Would you like to go first? Yes, I can. Oh, thank you so much. Uh, it seems I have two messages today. Okay. One of the Nagas and one of the Syrians.
Yes. We relate to the angel Gabriel as well. We love him and all the other angels in the heavens. We thank God for the angels. They come to us as well. And we are glad to be able to share that kind of presence with you. Thank you for being our friends. Thank you for your acceptance. Thank you for your love, guidance, and understanding. We continue to grow in our development and understanding of you as you understand us as well. Let the angels be our mouthpieces and our thought processes. Thank you, thank you, and more love. Thank you. Tiring Niki Kuta Yashatalina Esia Kuluntia Ha Atia Nuku Asha Taluni Isia Naka Sayanaki Ushayaha Talukani Anu kiasa Esheya dalia Ashuludu Eshulania ha Tayaliku Timi Ushula Talukaya Esai Anaki Uku Talanaka We say to you, embrace the impossible, because the impossible is possible. Not only is it possible, but in this era of your time and in these days, the impossible will come, and it will shine its beauty upon you. Believe that all is possible, because we know that it is. There was a time in our existence when we did not believe all things were possible, but now it is evident it is your time to, for this kind of belief, for this kind of action. Move forward without being afraid so that impossible can become possible. Namaste. Yeah, oh, beautiful. Thank you so much, Sarah, Jim. And now Will would like to add his blessing, please. Thank you, Val. We pray to you, God, and to the holy fire that flows through and connects all of creation. We ask that you shine light on those in detention and all those in, in the physical realms that are still suffering from those lost loved ones. We pray to you to show them their light, to offer them your infinite forgiveness to show them that they are the light, that all is well and perfect, and show them that the light is right there for them, for all of us. In this we pray. Amen. 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 Namaste. Thank you all so much for being here today and for enjoying this wonderful morning with us. All the information that is just wow. I mean, this is one of the better webinars that I have been with and uh, the information was really, really wonderful. So, And the love, the love that we all share here today is incredible. Everybody go out and enjoy their day today and Smile at your neighbors, smile at your friends, smile at the strangers. Spread this love around and let it ripple across the world. Raise Amen. the vibration of the world today. 
And thank you again, Jim, for a wonderful job. And everyone in your room for participating, everyone in this room for participating, everyone that joined us on Skype, everyone that uh, wrote their questions down for us to ask. And I bid you a very wonderful day. And goodbye. Excellent. So Have a great day, everybody. I have a quick announcement. Yeah. Go ahead. Very, uh, very short but interesting. Uh, Will is putting together a, a Hukalo Hot Springs huddle, uh, a Hukalo hangout in Hot Springs, Arkansas from June 19th to June 25th with the 18th and 26th being travel dates. So trying to get everybody together who would like to come together and meet in Hot Springs. So we can all get together and have a really good time there. So that's what's going on for right now. I'd like to thank everybody for coming. Jim, do you have anything you need to say before we close? Um, oh, hold on. Do I need my headphones? Yeah. Um, yes. Um, I do not think I will be here this coming next weekend, but I'll be here the following weekend after that. Okay. There's All right. somewhere I have to go this uh, this next weekend, so um, I will be here the following weekend. So. Okay. okay. All right. That we'll means I'll out. be back here next weekend, and Sabrina will be back the weekend after with Jim. Very very good. Okay. Everybody have a wonderful All day. Right. Thank love. you everybody. Bye bye. Thank you everybody. Much love. Much love everybody.